Um, this is only recorded for the five people that I mentioned today. So it's not um, it's not going to YouTube or it's not going to um it's not a public view. God has been asking for at least a month now for fruit, for fruit from this Bible study. I know everybody's growing, but he's asking for fruit from the people who are in this Bible study. Um, so I already know that you talk to people. I already know that Sister Mary ministers to the homeless. I know that Kiri is ministering to our family. I know that um, so that leaves Sister Christiana and, and Sister Mariama. I know Mr. Sister Mariama is doing the same. Um, so this morning, the Lord spoke to me in a different way. So we're basically going to be doing almost like training sessions in a comfortable place where we don't have to be ashamed because God is going to start asking us to do things in our normal day-to-day, -day, you know, and we need to be ready. So that's basically what it is. Um, I'm going to read something in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17, and then just a little bit into chapter 3, which is very short. Um, it says, you see, we are not like the many hawksters who preach for personal profit. We preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation? Or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. So when you can present a person and it's evident that there's fruit in their life, Paul is saying that person is a letter that somebody can read. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. We are confident of all this because of our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. That part is very important so that we don't go and... Um, wonder how, how I, 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 it has nothing to do with us. We are confident of all this because of our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think that we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death. But under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. So basically, this is what God wants to see. I feel like I'm, I'm moving this table a lot. Oh, I forgot that it's moving. Um, this is what God is trying to see from whoever we interact with. A letter. That's what I was getting this morning, a letter. And that we should not think that we are doing anything on our own. We should not think that we are um, basically doing anything on, on our own. But he is enabling us to do it. All right. So that's that's what we have. And um, I'm going to run through some things uh, very quickly. Okay. I guess I wrote some things here and then on paper. Sometimes if you have permission to go and minister somewhere from the Lord, you might get sick the day of or the day before. It's not a, so if for example, I get a very bad headache, you know, seven hours before I'm supposed to go minister and I had a headache all the day long. I understand that that's not my headache. I understand it's just an attack. I understand it's just to get me to cancel uh, the ministration. So what do I do? I stand upon the rock that is Christ Jesus and I break 
that sickness and I stand. The word of God says, after doing all, you stand. I stand. I don't cancel anything. Sometimes five minutes before the ministration, the headache would just go away like it was never there. Sometimes, you know, an hour before the ministration or right before I'm about to shower, that thing would just disappear. Stomach ache, it, it could be a lot of things. It would just disappear. So that's not something that you typically learn. That's something that you experience. So after I've experienced this so several times, I called them, you know, around and saw that, oh, that is actually a thing. Those are people who don't say it. I don't know why they don't say it. Maybe because um, it makes them vulnerable. But it's a thing. And as Christians, we need to know that that actually exists. Um, being attacked. Okay, praise God. Being attacked um, before the ministration. After the ministration, if you find out that you're having any kind of symptom of something that you cast out, or something that you told to go, something that you prayed for somebody for, you find out that that symptom is in your body. You need to stand upon the rock that is Christ Jesus and break it, reject it. If you find out that you go home after administration and everybody is arguing with you and against you and this and that, you need to break that spirit because sometimes when you minister a lot, but sometimes when you minister, um, whatever it is that you cast out goes to wait for you at the house. Or whatever it is that you cast out can come upon you. It doesn't make you a weak Christian. It just makes you understand, hey, that's something I need to break and move on. You don't need to be watching your back and whatnot. Just break it and move on. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the word of God says that, um, hold on, let me catch what I'm trying to say. I just, when you break it and move on, the reason why it's on you, it cannot um, be in you because you have the Holy Spirit, but it can come on you and wait for you to agree. So for example, if, um, if I prayed for somebody concerning um, cancer, and I start seeing cancer symptoms. If my mind is not sharp and alert and, you know, having the knowledge that, oh, something that I actually break off of somebody can try to come on me. I might start going to go and look for medicine for something that is an attack. And then as I start to agree that, oh my God, I have this. Oh my God, I have, I have. As I agree, it stays. So you want to, be alert that this is a possibility and then you want to break it and move on break it and move on all right um the trainings from now are going to be practical um we've been in seasons we move in seasons uh we've been in seasons and the season we just entered the way that he said it is that i'm training ministers of the new covenant that I'm training ministers of the new covenant. So the new covenant is, um, praise God, the new covenant is signed with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is in 1 Corinthians 11. I'm gonna read that very quickly. 1 Corinthians 11, um, verse 25. It says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper. Now, if you read the whole verse 11, you will see that this is not Paul necessarily saying, um, uh, this is uh, what happened, this is what I heard. He said, this is what I got that Jesus said happened. So this, this is Jesus' testimony of what happened on that night. He said, for I passed to you what I received from the Lord himself. So he's saying, this is what Jesus told me happened. So verse 25, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Okay, so we are, and that new covenant is a lot of things. So yes, it's still in the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the cup, um, it is healing, it is um, atonement, it is reconciliation. It is a lot of things, but we are ministering the new covenant 
we are ministers of the new covenant. And that's what it says in um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, all the way to chapter 3, verse 6. So we need to start asking God, what is this new covenant? What do you want me to minister? How do you want me to minister it? Um, okay. Well, that's what he said. He said um, that... Now, it's, it's practical for the ministers of the new covenant. It'll be practical training on ministration um, to hone the skill of ministration. Now, I can't tell you what to say because the word of God says in that very hour, he will give you what to say. But I can tell you what happens. I can tell you that when the anointing hits you, it can knock you down in front of everybody. I can tell you that if you don't have capacity, you can embarrass yourself in front of people because when the anointing hits you, it can knock you down. When the anointing hits you, you can start doing a lot of things in front of people that you should not be doing. And it's, uh, it's like somebody just opened a book and just read, oh, low capacity. So when, um, now granted, when if somebody lays hand on you or the presence of God hits you for a particular reason, you can fall. That doesn't, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. But if you're the person ministering and you're trying to minister to somebody and the anointing that comes on you to minister to somebody, that anointing is knocking you down. That's saying something. If you are going to minister, you need more word, more of the word of God, more time in his presence, more time in the word of his presence to increase your capacity or stamina to increase your capacity or stamina all right excuse me and you need to remember you're not the person doing it you can't do it the word of god says that you know they went out preaching and doing all these things the lord coming beside them and backing them up with signs and wonders it's not your job the lord does that you just speak whatever he says you should speak and he does that Okay. Um, so like I said, God has been asking for fruit. So be sensitive when God, you know, you will just be there and God will just say, hey, talk to this person. Hey, do that. Or somebody actually calls you to come and minister somewhere. All right. Um, so the stirring up for assignments or the building for assignments is crucial. It's good to have it in a safe space like here so that when you're out there, you already have you know, an idea what to expect. If you're talking to a group of people and the people in front have stone face, you don't have to look at them. You know, Just maintain your joy, maintain the presence of God. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. And you know, walk around the room, move your eye around. Don't keep your eye on that person. Um, mm -mm. When you're going to minister, when I go to minister, I stay in the presence of God. Before going to minister, sometime before going to minister, I stop talking to people. I don't communicate with anybody, not my children, not my husband, not anybody. I separate from everybody. And I separate myself unto the Lord because I'm going to do his assignment. And then I come out of the house. I go, because I'm married, I will ask my husband to pray over me and then when he's done praying i won't ask a parent to do that i will ask a, a spouse to do that i will go i will i will stay in the presence of what i might have music or i might just be praying the whole way or just worshiping when i would say worship not necessarily singing or just adoring god and when i get there i stay in the presence it doesn't matter what the atmosphere is there i maintain myself in his presence there is an atmosphere of where you're going there is an atmosphere of you i don't take any phone calls because at that time you can talk to somebody and they can say something that will mess up your spirit and that's it for the whole ministration it's a struggle through the whole ministration so be careful 
what you do right before ministering. Be careful what you do right before ministering. Okay. Um, we're going to be practicing giftings. Um, we're going to be teaching. Um, I have a breakdown on, on what, who and who we'll be um, doing because we're not all doing the same thing. Um, so we'll develop confidence in front of people to walk in whatever God has called us to do or the gifting that God has given um, us. Um, I'm asking for a commitment to win a soul or preach the gospel clearly to at least five people between now and the end of the month of August or pray for the sick, visit people, you know, visit home, something like that. Okay. And whenever we do that, just go ahead and text me. Just one, two, three, four. You don't have to go into detail. I'm not talking about somebody who was in the elevator and you said Jesus loves you. You know, that's, that's when you're scared. That's when you're scared. Um, I know that because I did that. <laughs> that's how I started. When you're running out the elevator, Jesus loves you. You just... <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. All right. Um, you have to be in constant prayer. You can't wait for the Holy Spirit to alight on you and then you pray. You have to be in prayer. You have to pray. It builds your capacity. It builds your stamina. It girds you for warfare. So that when warfare comes, even in the dream, you are girded. Okay. Uh, it helps you. The word is awesome. Prayer is awesome. They help you to scan the room in the spirit as you are ministering. While you're ministering, you have to scan the atmosphere when you walk in on your way there before you get there. You know, you would have already prayed towards the ministration. You have to scan the atmosphere when you get there. If you sense anything, break it even before you touch the microphone. Um, you have to scan the people. Don't look at the human beings. The word of God says that we should know each other by the spirit. You have to scan the people in your spirit so you can talk to the Holy Spirit who is here. Or if you know how to scan the room in your spirit, do that. Um, so minister coming from staying in his presence. Um, it's easy for you to scan the room. It's easy for you to scan the people. It's easy, okay, there it is, praise God. It's easy for you to scan their intent to scan their understanding of what you're saying, to scan their doubts, to pick up what they like, oh, mm, and then you can explain on that a little bit more, you know, and then you keep going. You don't have to say, oh, I know you don't believe me. You don't have to go there. There's no need. If you are saying something and you just sense in your spirit a resistance, you can just stop right there and explain some more and say, does anybody have any question? You know, because you know there's a resistance. You address it without flogging anybody. It's okay for somebody's spirit to reject what you're saying. But is it because of ignorance? Now, will your explanation help? Okay. Now, um, so you scan the room for their attention to see if they're actually paying attention for resistance, praise God. So when you scan for the attention, if you are sensing in your spirit, they're not actually paying attention. You can speak over people without going in Jesus' name, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, you say, listen, please. So the listen is actually a command. It just didn't come out as a rude thing, but in the spirit, they know what you said and their spirit responds to what you just said. So you can give away certain words, listen, or look at this, or you know, like you get the attention. You're not trying to witchcraft over somebody to control their spirit, but you can speak a word to get the attention. Let's just put it that way. 
All right, so you read the room, you scan in your spirit for the attention, for resistance. If you're seeing that there's a resistance, you say, you know, you, you can speak towards that without flogging anybody, without pinpointing anything. Um, you scan for ease, you scan for the atmosphere, for anything that is in operation, for example, a distracting spirit, a baby that was awesome. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you start saying something in a specific topic, they go off. You can ask for the baby to be, to step out. You can just as you are speaking, you know, hey, um, you know, hey, baby. And you, as you're talking, you say, I come against every spirit of distraction. You can actually pray that in your spirit. You can actually pray that in your spirit or something like, you know, and you understand, you understand easily because you have the mind of Christ. You have just spoken. Words have life and they're actually moving. That's why it's, uh, we have to be careful uh, when we speak. All right. So as you are talking, don't run. You don't have to because you're trying to hurry up and say a lot of things. It's not about saying a lot of things. It's about saying what God gave you to say. God will actually keep you in the time frame that the, your host has given you. So unless you start putting your own words that you really feel you need to say that the Holy Spirit hasn't given you to say, you will go over time. Um, as I'm ministering and I'm going through my notes, if my notes is looking longer, you know, I start searching my spirit, Holy Spirit, what do I need to say? What do I need to say? And I just pick up what he says. As a matter of fact, if I have seven pages of notes in order of how I'm supposed to say it, the Holy Spirit, as, I'm, as I open my mouth to talk, he can take me to page three and then page five, page seven. He, he just run me all over the place so that he really nonsense my notes. So it's good for us to depend on him. He wants us to depend on him. But by the time I get to the end and I look through all the notes, I've actually covered everything. But it wasn't how I wanted it to be. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, so keep your spirit sensitive in constant check with the Holy Spirit, as your mouth is moving, let everything that is coming out of your, your mouth, let your spirit agree. That's a good way to say it. Let your spirit agree. Let the Holy Spirit, you know, be okay with what you are saying. So keep in check with the Holy Spirit on your words, on the motivation of your words, on the motivation of your actions while you are preaching. Come on, say hallelujah. Where, where were you going with that? It's good to say hallelujah, but why, why did you say it that way? Keep your motivation in check. Uh, when you, well, when you do all these things, it's easy for the Holy Spirit to move when he knows you are not trying to get glory for you. He can easily move. Keep in check with the Holy Spirit on your words how you should do what you're doing, how you should say what you're saying. Certain things you will say with a certain tone will kill the whole message of either the entire message or that part of what you're saying. But the Holy Spirit can have you say it in a certain way. I might be saying something and it's something very serious. When it comes to that part of the message, the Holy Spirit will have me laugh that part into the message. Now, that thing that is very serious, people can easily take it. He will now minister that to them. But that might have been the strongest part of the, what I'm saying and the part I really needed them to say. So if I really needed, oh, okay, pay attention right here. Okay, everybody pay attention, pay attention to me. Do this, do this, do this, do this. You will lose everybody because of a bad um, attitude. Or people will think, oh, your character. Meanwhile, you just really want to stress a point that is very stressed to you in your spirit. He will just have me laugh that part. And you know, while they're why you you know, while people are laughing, the Holy Spirit actually comes in in administration. A lot of people get you to laugh. But what people don't know is as you are laughing, joy can quickly come in. As you are laughing, the Holy Spirit can quickly get a hold of you. So even through laughter, he can minister. So keep in check with the Holy Spirit on your words and how to say, how to do, when should I really sing? Should I just give him glory? Should I praise him? You know, um, 
keep in check the motivation of your delivery and your words and everything you are doing. So sometimes if you get to a place and the atmosphere is dry and you're like, oh Lord, I'm about to struggle. You can ask for the choir to, hey choir, do you know this song? You know, to change the atmosphere. If that doesn't change the atmosphere, don't start ministering without the presence of God. Now this is for people who can sense his presence and they have sensed that the atmosphere is dry. That's what I'm talking about. You have sensed that the atmosphere is dry. And you're somebody who is used to, when you're talking to somebody, the Holy Spirit is with you. This is moving smoothly. You can already sense it in your spirit, oh Lord. You don't have to start with, okay, praise God, we are talking about this today. No, take your time to give God praise. The word of God says that he inhabits the praises of his people. No certain principles that just help you. Let you usher the presence of God. If, if you know, you, the choir doesn't have to help you to sing. You usher the presence of God. You give God praise. Then you, the presence of God will come for you and everybody will enjoy it. Come and then also use your words to set the atmosphere. Holy Spirit, I just pray that even as we are speaking, you just minister to everybody here. The presence of God will just spread as you are speaking. So will I do. That's the word of God. As you are speaking, so will I do. Um, so keep in check with the Holy Spirit on your words. How, when, the motivation of your delivery, the motivation of everything. So basically, keep your heart pure. You don't need to rush your words. Um, watch for what he wants you to do or say or how um and that's what i have for today does anybody have any questions um i don't know if you know this as soon as i've I, i've said everything that i'm supposed to say i'm done sometimes administration you can finish early i'm not saying that you have 30 minutes and you use two minutes but you, you can finish early it's okay to say what God wants you to say and come out from there. Man wants you to be there for a certain amount of time. God wants you to do what he asks you to do. And once it's done, you don't have to be there. Um, unless he's letting you talk about something else. But that's how error starts. I find that when you say what God said, how he said it. You don't have to go back to see if you made a mistake. It's not your words. It's not your delivery. If you were yielded and did exactly what he said, there's no need to go back and check and say, oh, have I grown from the word? I don't know. That's, I mean, you can, you can tell. But, but that's what the Holy Spirit said I should say. So therefore, I'm not checking for what he said. All right. Um, any questions? If you have any question, come on audio, please. And it's recording for me, you. So Brian, Mariama, Mary, Christiana, and Kiro or Pamela. That's um, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so if you uh, pick a particular session last week and mm -hmm. when you get back home you got a speaking particularly about a particular point and you have been given the opportunity to come and speak again can you refer back to the message you made last time say what you said again if if you okay, um, so gave a message like, last week like, and if you actually teach a class last the last week okay and when you are teaching you make an error of a particular speaking you did but in the course of the week, you got the you got the answer to the error you made. You have been given another chance to speak the following week. Can you refer back to the error you made and correct the mistake? You can, but don't make it. Don't take part of the new class time. So something like, okay, today we are, um, you know, Father, we just give you praise and come and help us today in Jesus' name. Uh, last week, we you remember, we spoke on, um, you know, being kind to one another. 
And you know, it's funny when I got home, the Holy Spirit was telling me that, oh, this is actually how it is. You see how you have easily corrected it? And this week, we're going to talk about this. Do you see that? Yeah, I got the answer. Okay, okay. So don't, don't make it a big deal. Don't make it a, don't make it stand out. Just ease it in and people will just catch it and you just move on. You just move on. You just move on. You just move on. Okay. And beware of people with critical spirits, people who came to the administration with kin to see where you will fall, to see where you do this, do or do what. Just do what God asks you to do. And you know, there's something that they say, you, and you get to a point where it, it's an argument, you know, you like, you know, you know what? Let's go home and all pray to God and talk to him about it. And I pray that God will expand it more in our hearts in Jesus' name. Move on. Because I know sometimes Bible study can turn into arguments. Praise God. Um, any other questions? All right, let's pray. Brother Brian, can you pray for us, please? Well, we thank you for today. We thank you for instruction and message we received. Lord, we pray that in our daily lives, we are yielded to your Holy Spirit to be led, to be guided. Lord, we pray that we take your word in, we learn, so that when we go out to preach the gospel of Christ, Lord, we are with us. We pray we're built in the Bible study, in our understanding, in the knowledge of Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we have one more minute. Um, it's good to be instant in season and out of season. So that when somebody calls you, you don't have to say, no, 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 let somebody else pray. Always go. If your spirit is not against it, always go. The Holy Spirit will give you something even when you touch the microphone. Even when you touch the microphone. Even when you touch the microphone. So if, if somebody's like, oh, Sister Krista, can you um, come and do the closing prayer for the service? I will go and I won't just say, oh, in Jesus' name. I'll say, oh, wow, what a wonderful service. And I'll pick up something that they said, you know, that, that was just so awesome for me. Father, we bless your holy name. You want to ease into everything that you're doing. Um, that's what we have for today. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, sorry. So, where did I write it? Okay. Andy is going to be on a lot of preaching. Sister Mariama is going to be on preaching. Sister Mary is going to be on preaching and edifying in the area of um, preaching with practicality, teaching with practicality, not really going in depth as a teacher, but with practicality. Nkiru will be I don't know if you call it admonishing, but she will be going more on the topic. And here is Pamela. Pamela will be going more on the topic of um, admonishing and encouraging in the area of yieldedness. She will be focused on yieldedness. Brian will be focused on preaching. Mariama will be focused on preaching and reaching like an outreach type thing. Um, Sister Mary will be focused on teaching practically, so almost like mentoring. And Sister Christiana on the prophetic, 
and speaking in front of people. Okay. So those are the areas that we are going to focus on now. That's, that's what I have for now. If God switches it, we will know and we will go that direction. But well, that's what we have for now. So Pamela will be talking about yieldedness. Sister Christiana will be talking about the prophetic or be um, um, sh her sessions will be based on the prophetic. Sister Mary based on mentoring. Um, Sister Mariama based on outreach and uh, Brother Brian Bray based on preaching. All right, praise God. That's what we have. Sister so, Christiana, what are you doing next Saturday? Um, I'm going to be at work. Okay. And then Sister Mary is feeding the homeless. So between... Brian, Sister Mariam. We'll see if we can have Sister Mariam next week. So she won't talk much because she just had a um, a medical situation. So we'll see if we'll have her next week just to start off. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good one. This will be on YouTube, but it will be, um, you need a link to access it. So I will send you the link once it's up. So excited. All right, have a good one.